This is the first video of a four-part series sponsored by both OWC and Atomos. In this video, you'll see the micro doc, really just a short interview that I shot at a local business called Brew Pub, started up recently by a couple of friends of mine. This segment of the interview is focusing on the coffee side of their business. I'll shoot more about the beer side of things another day. Anyway, what you're about to watch is that interview, shot entirely in ProRes RAW internally to the Lumix GH7 using the insanely fast OWC media, which of course you need to capture ProRes RAW internally, all while using the new Atomos Shinobi 2 monitor, which is very helpful while shooting pretty much anything. As you might imagine, this entire project was set up to highlight the OWC media and the Atomos monitor. So the three videos following this one, all being released a couple days apart, so depending on when you're watching this, you may have to be sure to subscribe to get notified when the rest come out, will be deep dives into the OWC media collection, including the CF Express Type B cards, the 40 gigabit per second CF Express Type B reader, the 40 gigabit per second SSD drives, and more of their tools, along with the Atomos Shinobi 2, a brand new camera monitor that includes camera exposure control and recording start-stop control right from the monitor itself. And the Shinobi 2 can even power a camera over USB-C. Then the final video will be about the ProRes RAW to DaVinci Resolve workflow. As you may well know, Resolve doesn't support ProRes RAW, so a conversion to Cinema DNG is required. How to do that is just a 30 second video. However, if you're doing a Blackmagic Cloud proxy remote editor workflow like I am, then it gets a lot more complicated quickly. So I'll explain in that video how I worked around those complications to bring this project to life. Now, with no further ado, meet Chris from BrewPub. I met Miha in 2018 when we were going to a beer festival. We were both working and we started talking about how much both of us love beer and everything that beer can have and can be and my ideas of beer from the States and the breweries I've been to and worked in really could be used here in our small city. And eventually it turned into us having a plan to have our own place. And once we had a plan set, we started incorporating our personalities into it. Me being a coffee person, him being a beer person, turned into us creating a place that is about coffee and beer together. We kept calling this our brew pub idea, our brew pub project. Oh, when we were brewing small batches, you know, in his basement, it was always like, oh yeah, we really like this recipe, we'll keep this for when we have the brew pub. Or, oh, we really like this, and when we have a brew pub, this. And we kept saying the same term brew pub all the time. And one day when we were, or we were even talking with Urosh, our graphic designer, we're like, what are we gonna call it? And like, well, we keep calling it brew pub, why don't we just call it brew pub? <laughs> and we did some searching and found out there's not a place called brew pub. The domain name was really easy. It just seemed like it fit. So the name means it's, it's brew pub. We brew beer, we brew coffee. We just thought that it was too literal. And anybody that's not familiar with the term brew here, they will be now, hopefully. The location was definitely the thing that we put the most effort into at the very beginning because we knew that we needed something big but not too big and we wanted to have it still feel like a pub and that pretty much even though we got this gigantic place turned into our choice of decorating it and things like that but finding a place was not easy we needed an outside seating we needed inside seating we needed to be able to add our own style to it, our own feel to it, without the building itself uh, dictating what it looked like or felt like. And this place has very much a, its own style, but it's a style we could work with. It is located on Lint, and Lint is a very popular street in Maribor. And it's also located directly behind the oldest vine in the world, which happens to be a tourist attraction. And uh, many people find themselves walking down the street and we you know, are lucky enough to have people constantly walking by and maybe they want to sit down. People that are you know, going to be on Lind one way or another just because it's the place to go when it's sunny. So we have natural sun, natural shade, things we wanted. I definitely have a slightly different view of coffee than people around here. 
I would say that I bring something different because I have been trained in modern coffee in America, where people think that, oh, American coffee is just a triple chocolate Americano with whipped cream and sprinkles. And like, really, there's more to it than that. It's the same with beer. People think that American beer is just crap beer that's like water. I want to see something special happen, but also be very simple and be applicable to European standards. I've known that people here love coffee, and people here love coffee done well, and I'm not trying to change anybody's opinion on coffee, but I will definitely say that, you know, tradition isn't everything. And there's always space for people to understand their coffee differently. Even though we have only been here for a week, it seems like we've been very well accepted so far. Uh, we've heard a lot of great feedback from friends and from people who have just been traveling through. And a lot of people have, you know, understood how it is to open a business, you know, our friends and everything, how there's certain setbacks and they still will support us through all the hardships of all of this. Everybody likes our spot. Everybody likes the vibe that we're putting out. We're very excited about that because we worked pretty hard for it. I would like to keep the coffee flowing the way it is, how it is to be traditional and easy drinkable. Same with the beer. The beers aren't gonna be too crazy at the beginning. They're gonna be as traditional as possible. In the future, we do plan on having multiple different styles of beer that could almost be considered experimental. And I also do want to have a few different varieties of coffee. Right now we just have our house blend. I would like to offer different ways of brewing coffee as cold brew, um, batch brew or filter coffee that we could do to also open people up to ways of enjoying coffee. As a brew pub, we are also brewing our own beer. We have a brewery in the back and it is not a very common thing for people to have a brewery and a bar integrated together. And that was, I think, the main reason we started this was that we wanted to brew our own beer and have a place to enjoy it at the same time. And we didn't want it to just be a beer place. We wanted it to be a cafe feel as well, which is why here, when you walk in the door, from the terrace, you see that it's, wow, it's actually a lot bigger inside than it looks. Then you see the whole open area and the upstairs, and then down here at the bar, and we have some you know, comfy seating, comfy seating upstairs, and then in the back area, we have kind of more like a small hall area where it feels more like a place to drink beer and get loud, almost more like Czech style like underground beer drinking area. From there, you can see back into the brewery, which is important so that you can actually see what's going on there. And when the brew days are happening, you, people can come in and when they're headed down, you know, just poking around, then they can actually look back and see, oh yeah, they're actually brewing beer right there. I'm Chris and I am the co-owner of Brewpub. If you find yourself in Maribor, Slovenia, be sure to stop by Brew Pub for a hot coffee or a cold beer and tell them Photo Joseph sent you. Now, check out the rest of this series, all in a playlist here.